I'd like to conclude our reflections on chapter 8 of the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, we're at that point in chapter 8 uh, where Jesus is uh, dealing with a, another healing. And this particular healing is of demons. Uh, these two demons had uh, uh, approached Jesus. Uh, and, and these demons lived in tombs, and the demons were uh, really so notorious in the area and so savage in the area that the very road that you know was near these caves nobody went on. So that was uh, the fear uh, of them in, in, in the area. So Jesus uh, is now trying to overcome that power and, and that fear that people have for these uh, two uh, who are possessed with demons. So they cry out, those two uh, men that are possessed, What have you to do with us, Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the appointed time? Uh, very interesting how they address Jesus, and uh, very interesting. I mean, they've, they've met Jesus, and they're having this encounter, and so they, they cry out about him being the Son of God and tormenting them, and uh, it's an amazing dialogue, really, that they have uh, with, with Jesus. So, first of all, that expression, uh, what have you to do with us? It's really a Hebrew expression of hostility. Uh, it's a denial of any common interest. You know, we're, we're not going to deal on equal footing here. Uh, you know, what are you doing dealing with us? Uh, and it's uh, really a dismissal of another person. And you want that person out of your life. What have you to do with us? Uh, don't go near us. We don't want to deal with you. We don't want you to deal with us. Uh, let's let's just, you know, kind of get away from one another as quickly as we can. Uh, that's that's the feeling one gets from that expression, that Hebrew expression. Then they speak about an appointed time. So we're thinking, well, is Jesus making an <laughs> have to make an appointment with them? What what is this? deal about an appointed time. Uh, the teaching that evil spirits could afflict humans until the end of time. So that, that was the teaching that they were referencing. Uh, you know, we can have our way. We can deal with human beings. We can uh, entice them and trap them, wreak havoc on them until the end of time. At the end of time, we're done. That's It's finished. Uh, that teaching was found in Enoch, uh, chapter 16, verses 1, and also in Jubilees 10, 7 to 10. So it was a fairly common uh, teaching in, in the literature, and it would have been understood by the people, certainly in Jesus' time. Interesting, though, about this encounter is that the demons recognize Jesus. They seem to know quite clearly who Jesus is and what Jesus is about. Um, they call him the Son of God. So the dark powers of the world, of spirits, know with whom they have to contend. Even before Jesus is recognized as such by women and men that he's dealing with in his ministry. So here we have a, a very interesting development. The, the evil spirits, <clears throat> the two who are possessed by demons, are, are having this dialogue with Jesus and call him the Son of God. But I'm sure those who were following Jesus were like, Son of God, what, you know, what are you talking about here? I mean, he's, he's a great healer. Certainly at this point, we've seen healings. He's a great teacher. He's done marvelous things. But this talk of son of God, I mean, we, we've heard the expression used, son of man, that Jesus has this special mission from God to bring uh, men and women and, and God together. But now son of God, I mean, that's, 
you know, beyond anything that we've encountered so far. Then in verse 30, the next verse, some distance away, we learn, a herd of many swine was feeding. So there's this herd of swine, and they're having a good time, they're feeding. Uh, this obviously would have been a Gentile area that Jesus is in at this point. He's not among fellow Jews uh, because they're not going to be having swine. Uh, the swine is an unclean animal. Uh, so Jewish people did not have them, cultivate them, eat any of the pork uh, from uh, the pig. So this is a different area than where what we're used to seeing Jesus minister in and, and speaking, this area of where the pigs were. So the demons then plead with Jesus in verse 31, if you drive us out, send us into the herd of swine. So the demons are like, you know, maybe we should go into the swine. You know, we don't want to go into other places. You know, let's go into the swine. Uh, and it's very interesting that it's framed this way in, in the Gospel of Matthew because the pig is considered the most unclean of all animals. And so since the pig is unclean, this would be a suitable place for the demons who certainly are encouraging and enticing others to sin to go away from God. So they are completely unclean themselves. So unclean spirits going into unclean animals makes a lot of sense. <coughs> so then in verse 32, Jesus says to them, go then. I want to go into the swine, go then. They came out, the demons, and entered the swine. And the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea where they were drowned. So obviously we're near the sea. Uh, the uh, particular location, Gadara, seems to be a few miles away from the Sea of Galilee, but perhaps in this particular area of Gadara, we're closer to the sea. So the uh, pigs... Just after the demons come in, they just take off and go right into the sea, and they drown. Interesting. In the Jewish mind, since the pig was unclean and absolutely good for nothing, so the loss of a herd of pigs was not considered to be a real loss. The pigs are gone, so what? They're unclean. Good that they're gone. Uh, even the pigs, interestingly, reject the demons. So the demons who are unclean and who are enticing to sin are so bad and full of such evil that even the pig that's unclean rejects the evil spirits and goes into the sea and drowns. Uh, demons have no place in the world where the saving power of God has entered in Jesus Christ. So there's no place that a demon can be safe when there is that encounter with Jesus. Jesus overcomes their evil. Jesus leads to salvation. Jesus wants to establish the kingdom of God. So the demons aren't safe, and they, even the pigs reject them. The swine herds who had been attending the pigs ran away, and when they came into the town, naturally, of course, they're like, <laughs> we lost all our pigs, they're, they're upset. Uh, so they go into the town. They came to the town and they reported everything, including what had happened to the demoniacs. Thereupon, the whole town came out to meet Jesus. When they saw him, they begged him to leave their district. Jesus, please leave. Uh, they don't want anything to do with Jesus. Uh, their, their pigs are gone. Uh, interesting, though, they don't really allude to the cure. The demoniacs you know, the cured, and we don't hear about, in, in Matthew's version anyway, we don't hear about the demoniacs. Uh, this would be an example of a wonder, a great wonder, obviously, that does not inspire faith. So we always look for the connections between the miracles and faith, but this particular miracle, amazing though it is, as we reflect on it, does not inspire faith. 
And so it shows that there must be an openness to faith in order for the miracle to be really effective. Some would say, well, Jesus cured these demoniacs, they're no longer possessed. Isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? That road that we were afraid to go down, now we can go down. These uh, demoniacs, these poor men who were possessed can be welcomed back into our community. Let us rejoice. Let us throw a great meal. Let's have a celebration. There is none of that that happens in this encounter, according to Matthew. In Mark's account, different emphasis, the man who has been healed requests to follow Jesus. And Jesus commissions him to tell about the wonder. So in Mark's account, it's only the one man. In Matthew, we have two. Uh, and the man says, can I follow you? And Jesus gives him a commission to go and tell others about what had happened. So a difference in emphasis. Uh, Mark concerned about the uh, person who has been cured spreading the faith. Matthew much more concerned about the idea that the miracle, great as it was, uh, did not have the desired effect on this particular Gentile community. So it can be that emphasis in Matthew on the tension between the Jewish community and the Gentile community, uh, which is one of Matthew's emphasis that we see.